Welcome to another journey into the history of the Southwest Desert. We will be delving into the story of the Salton Sea at the turn of the 20th century. In this intriguing telling, we will learn its modern beginnings. This lake anomaly is 35 miles long by 15 miles wide and is located in the Southern California Imperial and Riverside Counties Desert. If you enjoy this episode, leave a like and comment please hit the subscribe button. It was the summer of 1891 when newspapers across America bore shocking headlines. A massive lake was suddenly appearing in California's Colorado Desert, one of the driest spots in the country. This sparsely populated region averages a mere three inches of rain per year. Yet somehow, a huge body of water was materializing. Where could all this water be coming from? How was a lake spontaneously forming in such an arid landscape? These questions gripped the public imagination, sparking intense speculation. Some theorized underground springs or aquifers had mysteriously surfaced. Others posited the lake was runoff from the distant Great Salt Lake in Utah. But with no concrete explanations, the lake's origins remained veiled in mystery. The newspaper editor in San Francisco tasked reporter Harry Patton with investigating. Patton wasted no time, traveling into the desert interior to lay eyes on the phenomenon himself. Reaching the location where the lake was said to be appearing, the Salton Sink, Patton found visible evidence seeming to confirm the rumors. Whereas the sink had always harbored a small salt marsh nourished by a trickle of brine, now a substantial lake occupied the depression, filled with salt water. Patton swiftly filed his initial report for the paper. Yet Patton knew his investigation was just beginning. He had to discover the source feeding this desert sea if the mystery was to be solved once and for all. Locating a nearby tributary of the Colorado River, Patton hired a boatman named Converse. Together, they sailed downstream, tracing the water's course. Days later, they arrived at a breached section of the river's west bank, just south of the Mexico border near Yuma. Rivers of water gushed out of the rupture, inundating the parched landscape. Venturing through the broken levee, Patton and Converse found themselves borne along violent new channels cutting through the desert. Newly eroded cliffs towered around them as their tiny craft shot through whitewater rapids. After several days navigating this ad hoc river system, they emerged onto the surface of a sprawling lake, the very same lake Patton had discovered days earlier in the Salton Sink. By boat, Patton had managed to follow the Colorado River's escaping flows as they flooded into the sink depression. The source of the mysterious lake was now clear, a river unleashed from its restraints. Patton relayed his harrowing discoveries in a series of dispatches back to his paper. But many readers across California remained unconvinced. The full story of how this could happen, involving the Colorado's long history of unstable courses across the Delta landscape, was not yet widely appreciated. And so Patton's exploits were considered far-fetched, if not outright fabrications. Among the doubting readers was a San Francisco man named Captain Thomas Fraser. Fraser knew the Colorado River Delta well from past surveying expeditions in the region. He understood how the Colorado often shifted back and forth between disparate outlets, either the Gulf of California to the south or the parched Salton Sink Basin to the north. This unstable regime was due to the river overflowing a modest silt barrier, separating the upper and lower delta. But when Fraser had last viewed the area, the river was in one of its gulf-spilling phases, keeping the Salton Sink dry. Could the wild vagaries of this river have now caused it to flood north into this desert depression once more? Fraser realized that extreme seasonal flooding could potentially produce this outcome. But another possibility also nagged him. Years before, Fraser had witnessed tremendous tidal bores propagating through the delta each day, extending inland many miles toward the Salton Sink. He harbored an alternative theory. 
Could ocean tides be the driving force pushing water to fill this sink? Though lacking concrete evidence, Fraser felt compelled to directly investigate both hypotheses on site. Enlisting his associate Walter Hathaway, Fraser embarked by train to the desert outpost of Indio, California in the withering summer heat. Temperatures crackled above 100 degrees Fahrenheit day and night. Pushing west of Indio, the pair soon reached the Salton Sink's edge. Gazing down onto its surface, they were stunned to find the expansive lake now actively encroaching upon structures built along its shoreline. Finding a flat-bottomed boat, Fraser and Hathaway set sail onto the lake that same evening under starry skies. All through the night and into the next sweltering day, they slowly rowed north. Ultimately, they reached the lake's southern margins, observing muddy inflows that appeared to originate from nearby desert washes. Wading ashore through blistering muck, Hathaway attempted to ascertain whether the entering waters were saline, hinting at tidal origin or fresh, suggesting direct linkage to the errant Colorado. But the sludgy terrain defeated inspection by foot. Retreating back aboard, the men continued eastward by boat. Mile after mile, they rode beneath the pounding sun. Eventually, channels of faster-flowing water came into view, evidence of the escaped Colorado. Tasting the liquid in these channels, the men confirmed beyond doubt that it was fresh water, thoroughly disproving Fraser's speculative tide theory. Though disappointed to have his hypothesis sunk, Fraser gained key insights about the region's hydrology from his pioneering lake voyage. With proof now established that the expanding lake owed solely to Colorado River flooding, the true chain of events could be unraveled. As suddenly as it had arrived that summer, the Salton Sea soon evaporated once more by 1900 as the Colorado shifted course again. But the wayward Colorado wasn't yet finished flexing its muscle in that arid valley. In 1905, catastrophic flooding burst from irrigation canals under construction in the region. Unchecked torrents of Colorado water again inundated the Salton Sink, birthing a new Salton Sea to replace the long-forgotten lake of 1891. The renegade river's days of random rampages in the Imperial Valley were ultimately numbered, however. In the 1930s, the Great Hoover Dam rose up the canyon country, at last penning the unruly Colorado. This immense flood control barrier would regulate its flows, signaling the end of its unpredictable desert deluges as Fraser had witnessed decades before. Yet while engineered works might restrain it, the latent Colorado forever holds potential for provoking geographical chaos. As Captain Fraser and Harry Patton explored firsthand, man's domain remains acutely fragile against nature's whims in the hot, arid West. Their exploits navigating the desert's wayward waters shine light on this fine line separating fragile civilization from flooding desolation. Even with mighty dams holding back chaos, the slumbering forces they contain must never be forgotten if the reclaimed land is to remain reclaimed. The journey through Southern California's arid expanse reveals the delicate balance between human endeavor and nature's fickle temperament, a tale as wild as the Colorado itself. Thank you for joining me on this adventure through the Southern California desert. If you enjoyed this, please give a like and comment. I would love to hear from you. Hit the subscribe button.